Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays Doki Doki Literature Club. Consider this your warning again at the start. If you consider yourself easily disturbed, or you do not wish to engage in sensitive content that may uh, irritate symptoms of anxiety or depression, don't watch. We're gonna load up our most recent game here um, and, and keep it moving to consider that you've been warned. You've been warned, okay? I don't even remember where we were at. It's been a couple of days. We were talking about poems. We were talking about the festival. Here we go. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much, we're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori's been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing. Performing? Oh my god. Are the For the love of god, my poems, please. Uh, Monica. Yeah, we're gonna be having a poetry performance. Each of us are gonna choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also gonna let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh? Eh, well I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I just kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Dot dot dot. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find us the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori, Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. God, why did I take all those media literacy classes? Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way. Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. My, oh my, the way they fly. Birds, so many birds in the sky. Will they land? If they do, I cry. My, oh my, oh how they fly. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply 
a natural. I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Clap, clap. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go to go next, Sayori? Yuri says, I'll go next. Ooh, uh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's... Oh, I see. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality. Oh, there goes gravity and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I, uh, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition that she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. <clears throat> grass, oh grass, in the meadow. Why, oh why, do you grow low? If you grow high, I could hide. When you grow low, they see me so. My meadow, my meadow, where did you go? <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Um, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The, po isn't, the poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone than I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Ryan liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fills you, fits you really nicely, excuse me. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. Who are you, my mom? Get over yourself, Monica. We don't have much time before the festival. You know what's gonna be they're all gonna be looking at their phones anyway, dummy. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Huh. <laughs> don't make me go before Ryan. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Ryan lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki, it's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Whirling, joyless ice cream. Parfait, stomach, lazy, doppelganger. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the, podi the podium. The poem is called, is called, Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. 
I like to jump. Dogs like to jump. Cats like to jump. Flies like to jump. Grasshoppers jump. Fish can jump. Dolphins can jump. But some dolphins die. That's me. I'm Natsuki. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You would better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, it's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets. What is that, some kind of foreign cuisine? So let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah, no problem. Hey, everyone, let's go to the festival. One of the students is going to read a, you know, Dylan Thomas poem. How exciting. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, and I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right! Natsuki gremlins menacingly in the corner. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, huh? How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ryan. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Come on, toots. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have really changed. But today, Sayori... But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> um, you know what? She's a childhood friend. We walk home together. I make my decision based on the way I would decide in real life. I would still walk home with you. You're a friend of mine. You know, maybe if we started some kind of relationship with Yuri, then my priorities would change. But for the time being, I would still walk home with you. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. I mean, I just wonder what kind of person you would be. That, like, your childhood friend is like, hey, if somebody else asked you to walk home, would you walk home with her? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, I like her way more than you. Like, we gotta be some kind of a monster. She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Ryan. You think about me too much sometimes. <laughs> you think about everything, don't you? Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Chicks. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never gonna happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I wanted to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh, to be a high school student looking forward to the summer festival. Donkey. Donkey, donkey. All right, we got to go good on this one because we're going to be presenting it, all right? Ocean. Amazing. Dude. Sunny. Dream. Meager. Meager fireworks. I don't know why I'm actually thinking. 
a daydream melancholy of incapable joy. Yo, that's a beautiful expression. Vacation starscape. With a unrestrained fun. <laughs> Tenacious romance and a giggle in secret leads to friends and fireflies. How about that? <laughs> oh, you're gonna catch some fish, Kate? Yeah. Kate, who's your Doki Doki Literature Club waifu? No spoilers, please. What? Okay, I mean, she's trying to spoil it for me, so I'm sorry I asked. Aw, oh, man! It's this one. Oh, dude! Um, that's my wife right there! Really? I'm really you're, you're a Monica stan? Only Monica? Only Monica, okay. Only Monica! She's, she's reeling, she do be reeling, though. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? She's in high school, she's got a lot of free time. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? One time at our school, we got a pizza day. You guys are getting fried squid, takoyaki, and dango? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. So, Ika is squid in Japanese. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? This game's got some self-awareness, there's no doubt about that. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, ah. <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? She shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, all right, if you say so. She said, because a cry for help. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else, but the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Ryan, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? <laughs> up like the sky? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? Can't say I noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Ryan. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Huh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest this fall on CBS? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Ryan. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Hey? Eh? 
She's been so much happier ever since he joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Ryan. Oh, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. So you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her. So try not to think about it for now. Ah, all right. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everybody else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book, but then she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk, put one hand in my pocket with my thumb out, and saunter over like a cool guy. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, sweetheart, you didn't even do anything. I'm going my own way. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, guess you're right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Babe, don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Eh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have been just friends for a long time and that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much, you know? Ryan. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah! So you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head, and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too, and I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? It ain't like that! Well, I guess that was the case, Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I... I guess... But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Uh-oh. Are we about to get a full art panel? Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri. Toots, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding me own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it, yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? This is my favorite part. Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Alright, but first, 
we speak to uh, Yuri. She's fragile and she needs the support. Well done, Ryan. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this, it's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone's enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. Guess I can't really say I disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Ryan? Huh? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, doesn't it, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know. And as always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Huh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Nah! For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri. It's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to these sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. I don't have friends. They disappoint me. Yuri. What, what am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. All right. Wrong line, by the way, buddy. All right. She's supposed to say, let's speak on that for a minute. Hold on. Do you want me to share? Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. It's not fair. You guys are getting like prepositions and conjunctions and stuff like that. I just get the dictionary. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish in the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward and I return to earth forevermore. That's, that's, that's bold. That's deep. I'm with it. Yuri, that's a 5 out of 5 poem. I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Mission succeeded. Mission accomplished. You say that you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well... It was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again, I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think we agree. Thanks for sharing. Let's go, uh, let's speak to Sayori next. She needs the help today. Dot, dot, dot. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Ryan. Uh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? Eh? Of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, all right. Hey, Ryan. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does, or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Yo, the music dropped out. What's happening? Wait! Of course I do. But if that doesn't, that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. 
I was thinking about beans when I wrote that one. She doesn't need to know that. No, no. Ryan, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori! I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Ryan. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> Promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Well, um... That doesn't bode well. Natsuki. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad that you're trying a little bit. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems, anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? You know you have a, a Yirden rune from The Witcher on your bangs. You know that, right? You're just a big fan of CD Projekt Red? Henry Cavill? Geralt? No, gross! It's not like I care about The Witcher or anything. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? But what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, um, uh, it's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. Good. Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh? Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. Ha <laughs> ha uh, How the heck do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Ouch, Natsuki. Natsuki elbowed me, and that really hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds her poem out to me like nothing even happened. All be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years, but today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that makes you... Daydream about me each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. Is this like a Jesse McCartney song? But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love again. I positively hate it. But I can't let her know that. I felt like I kept writing about negative things for once, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Your body is a wonderland. Your body is a wonderland. Open parentheses. I'll use my hands. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Um, you should talk to Anakin Skywalker about that one. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Oh, you can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic than trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. And finally, Mon Ika. Hi, Ryan. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure, I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like that other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, I just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. 
You know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. That's why I talked to you last, Monica. Monica, I talked to you last. I talked to them before you. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm just going in reverse alphabetical order, Monica. Sorry. Sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Er, all right. The lady who knows everything. I like it. She's, brevity is the soul of wit. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. We seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. And I pick up a gust of wind. And scene. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was like on my mind. So that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? It is 2020. I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I'm just look No, to confirm two-dimensional. Uh, I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing it becomes a lot easier because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things that you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way. It will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right, I think we should can this one here. It's already 38 minutes in. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Again, this was a subscriber milestone. We hit 820,000 subscribers. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Click the like button if you do. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.